system. That's the panels, the mounting system, and the most sought-after solar component, the Tesla Powerwall battery. It all amounts to the most advanced solar in the industry, and it's all waiting for you at sunlux.com. That's sunlux.com. CSLB 100 if you find yourself agreeing with everything we say, we're doing it wrong. KMI and KOST HD2, Los Angeles, Orange County. It's time for your morning wake-up call. And now, here's Jennifer Jones Lee. Well, good morning. Hope you had a wonderful weekend, a wonderful Father's Day weekend. Hope that all the dads out there had a great day and were spoiled appropriately. Also, we celebrated Juneteenth over the weekend, and I've got some stories about that for you. Oh, frustrated travelers. Oh, boy, I feel so bad for you. If you had a flight to catch yesterday, there's a good chance you weren't able to catch that flight because that flight wasn't available. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about that a lot this morning. Also... Hotter weather is on the way for this first week of summer. I guess Mother Nature looked at her calendar and went, oh, summer's here. Bam, let's bring on the heat. We'll talk with the National Weather Service. Kristen Lund is going to join us this morning. Also, the cop who allegedly took and shared photos of Kobe Bryant's body after the fatal helicopter crash has been accused of kneeling on an inmate's head for three minutes. And the Ferris wheel at Santa Monica Pier was just one of the things that was lit up to celebrate Juneteenth. So we'll get into all of that in just a second. Coming up at 5.05, we'll talk with ABC's M. Wynn. The Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, made a statement over the weekend that had a lot of people who've been nervous about a recession, including myself, breathing a little bit easier this morning when she said it. So I'll tell you exactly what she said, what it was in response to, and what we can expect in the future. All that will squeeze in with M in just a few minutes. But let's welcome now National Weather Service meteorologist Kristen Lund to wake up call. Kristen, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Um, we'll be seeing temperatures above normal all week. Um, for today, temperatures, temperatures will be warming uh, uh, due to offshore flow and no marine layers. We'll see temperatures in the 70s at the coast, and the valleys and deserts will actually be about 10 to 15 degrees above normal with like mid to high 90s, but 100 to 100. 101 in the western San Fernando Valley, around like the Woodland, Woodland Hills area. Then Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll see some temperatures actually a few degrees cooler due to clouds coming in and the switching to onshore flow. There will be a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms Tuesday evening to Wednesday evening. Then Thursday and Sunday, there will be a large high pressure responsible for like the warming temperatures to the east that will expand westward and kick off the warming trend. We'll be seeing the valley and desert temperatures in the 90s, reaching the low 100s by Sunday. And that, that will be about 8 to 12 degrees above normal. Oh, my gosh. So Mother Nature just saw June 21st and went, okay, summer's here. Boom, here's the heat. <laughs> yes, in fact, it did. So when when um, these, these temperatures are above normal, are we talking just a couple of degrees or poor Woodland Hills? I mean, they take the brunt of the heat always. But, you know, going mm -hmm. over 100 easy, it looks like, this week. Is this, uh, how far, I guess, away from normal are we? Yeah, so Sunday Sunday will actually be the warmest. Um, that will be about 11, 11 degrees above normal. Um, wow. And Thursday will actually only be a couple degrees above normal. Um, but oh. it will gradually increase. Hey, just bizarre question for you when I when I heard that you know possibility of some showers we'll take any of course uh, you yeah. also though don't want to increase any fire danger do we have to worry about thunder or lightning or anything accompanying those showers yeah we actually do relative humidity will be in like the low teens all this week um, with poor overnight recovery so that will give like an increased chance for like critical fire weather danger um, but like no red flag warnings are expected since it will be brief. However, there is the chance of dry lightning with the with this um, this thunderstorm coming up, so it could start fires, which we're going to be keeping an eye on. And we, I know we talk about dry lightning a lot, but for maybe somebody who goes, I hear that term all the time, but I have really no idea what that is. What is dry lightning? Yeah, so dry lightning is really like the lack of like moisture up of like above in the upper levels where the lightning actually occurs. Okay. All right. Well, that makes sense then. And it, but it seems 
still as scary, I guess, as regular lightning, if not maybe more, considering the fact that it would happen when you have conditions that would be ripe for a fire, it seems like. Yeah, yeah, it can be responsible for killing pretty dangerous fires. And when it comes to, I guess, um, the any sort of precipitation that we have right now, I would assume that our rainfall totals for up to right now, we are below average, correct? Yeah, we're actually one of the driest on record right now for our <laughs> rainfall accumulation. Oh, man. Kristen, I wish your first time with us was, you know, you brought us better news, but you are awesome, and welcome to the team, and uh, the early morning team that does this for me anyway is what I mean. So thank you so much you for so doing much. this so early. Yeah, I hope you're able to stay cool and stay hydrated this week. Oh, my gosh, you too. I'll send that right back to you. Thanks so much, Kristen. It was nice <laughs> to meet you. you. Nice to meet you as well. Bye See you guys. later. That is National Weather Service meteorologist Kristen Lund. So, in word, how about in two words, super hot this week. But we'll keep you up to date as these temperatures, uh, you know, get hotter. Like she said, Sunday, actually the hottest day of the week. So, I guess if you have any outdoor things to do, I would start doing them as soon as possible this week before the weekend comes. Right, when we come back, we're going to talk with ABC's M. Wynn about Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and the statement she made over the weekend that had a lot of people who were nervous about the recession breathing slightly easier. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Nick Pagliokini, good morning to you. Hope you had an awesome weekend. What's up on the 60s? Good morning, Senator. We can watch a pretty darn good. I thank you for that. And it's not looking the best to start things out for the folks as they're making their way through Ontario. Eastbound side and Archibald to Haven. It's all eastbound lanes that are shut down due to a wreck, and that's causing some heavy delays right now. Come away from Grove heading eastbound on the 60. Now, the good news is the westbound 60 looking pretty decent for you. Off the uh, 15 out of Ontario, continuing through Chino into Diamond Bar toward the 57. Got an update of something slowing you down. Time to 50 on yourself on keyword is KFI track. 210 and 6, uh, 10 west, rather, as alternates to 60 west. They are also looking good right now. Off the 15 toward the 57 and beyond through the uh, St. Gabriel Valley. Not seeing anything major going down for the drive. Now, it is problems that are happening for you in Irwindale on the 605 north at the 210. If the crash is a two-right lane shut down, updating the map looks like you're seeing a pretty rough ride as you're coming away from Arrow Highway. Also got problems for your drive in the Inglewood Hawthorne area. Westbound 105 past Crenshaw Boulevard as it crashes the left lane. Taking away, that'll be busy coming away from Vermont. Long Beach, 91 East before Paramount Boulevard, a crash in the left lane, still going for you, leaving Atlantic. KFI and this guy helps get you there faster. I'm Nick Pauli Okini. 506 on your wake-up call. M. Wynn, good morning to you this morning. And uh, let's talk about now what Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said over the weekend that made those of us who have been a little bit nervous about a recession, that includes me, feel a little bit better about what she had to say. Good morning. Right. So ABC's This Week anchor George Stephanopoulos was asking Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen about how many, uh, about 44% of economists expect a recession in the next year. Now, she said a recession is not at all inevitable, but she also says uh, she expects the economy to slow after it's been growing at a very rapid rate and also admitting that inflation is right now unacceptably high, but that is President Biden's, quote, top priority to bring it down. Now, of course, this interview had come a few weeks after Yellen admitted that she kind of underestimated the path towards inflation. And so George pressed her on that again, and again, she placed blame on certain unexpected events, including partially on Russia's invasion of Ukraine, saying the conflict has increased global prices on energy and food, that it's not an issue just here in the U.S., but it's a global issue. And so certainly she also noted that the Fed and the Federal Reserve Chair uh, Jerome Powell have tried to control inflation as much as possible while maintaining this robust job market. And while she, you know, was citing, as you mentioned, you know, the war in Ukraine, um, she also talked about the pandemic and talking about how you combine those two things and inflation is unacceptably high, I think was her statement. Um, but when it comes to, I guess, what is being done, that's, that's where I wish that we had heard more about. Right. So right now, I mean, realistically, we've heard from the president in the past couple of weeks to say that he really wants the Fed to get their lane and uh, basically the administration is going to step back and allow the Fed to do what they have to do to slow inflation without bringing the U.S. economy into a recession. So as of right now, we understand that the central bank is um, 
pretty much deciding on just how much to increase rates in the next few months. So there was an increased uh, interest rate by about a quarter point in March, about a half point in May, and then just last Wednesday, even though it was expected to be a half point increase, it was a three quarters increase, so more than we expected, the largest hike since 1994, and that just underscores the aggressive action the Fed is taking right now, but also just how much Americans are suffering right now when it comes to inflation. And then in the months to follow, so in July, we're expecting another raise of those interest rates by about half point. In September, in November, in December, the Fed is meeting again, and again we are expecting more point increases, probably about half point and another quarter point and another quarter point. So overall, that's to say that the federal fund's interest rate will be brought to around 3% by the end of the year. And so when Yellen was asked about just how much will be happening over the few um, months to follow, she says and admits that although maybe the rate of inflation may go down over the next few months, it's still going to be higher than expected. Um, and so certain economists were saying that it'll be a, still about around 7%, and she didn't disagree. So although there are some steps being taken, um, it may not lower inflation that much by the end of the year. She specifically had said, yes, it's unexpectedly, uh, unacceptably high, but also that because we're seeing high inflation for the first half of the year, it's likely to stay high for the rest of the year. Wow. And, and did she give a preview then for, okay, if we take care of all of this and we do raise the interest rates and it, it does go up by the 3% that they're expecting by the end of the year, does she feel that that will turn things around for next year? That basically saying to all of us, just suffer through this year and we'll see a turnaround next year? Or is it like, okay, well, this is just what we see for 2022, fingers crossed, for 2023? Right. So she says that unemployment rates are low. And she says that wages are high. And certainly this may be something that we'll continue to see, that spending will continue to be spent um, by consumers. But she has a very optimistic view of what will happen with inflation, which is that it will likely go down by the end of the year and then likely go down again by another few percentage points by next year. But again, economists are saying that that's very optimistic. We'll have to wait and see exactly whether or not these interest rate hikes will help ultimately because this could cause less money to circulate, right? And yeah. um, it could cause the value of the dollar to go back up. So right now our dollar isn't going very far. She optimistically is saying that ultimately right now the 40-year high is 8.6%. That will go down by the end of the year and again by next year. So that's the hope right now. But uh, right now it's, it's difficult to see that, right? Because we're living it and there's high cost for gas for groceries, for rent, for cars, for airfare, and other services. We're living it right now. We're struggling right now. But ultimately, once we do live through this, at some point, inflation should go down. Okay, I hope that at some point and sooner than later. Thank you so much, Em. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Jen. All right, see you later. ABC's M. Wynn. Also, I thought the, the only thing that did make me slightly nervous in this interview yesterday was when... Um, Yellen was talking about, you know, the president's number one priority and the Federal Reserve chairman's uh, number one priority being to bring inflation down while maintaining a strong la labor market. But th she said, Jerome Powell's goal will take skill and luck. Oh, I don't. I went to the casino with Michelle over the weekend. I don't. I don't want to, unless Michelle is in charge of the luck portion of it. I don't, I don't like thinking that my future is based on luck. That made me a little nervous. All right, let's get back to some of these stories coming out of the KFI 24-hour newsroom. Two El Monte police officers shot and killed on the job have been remembered by family, colleagues, and the El Monte community. A vigil held outside the Civic Center on Valley Boulevard Saturday honored Joseph Santana and Michael Paredes. They were shot last Tuesday as they responded to a report of a stabbing. The El Monte City Hall and city facilities will be closed to allow employees to mourn the loss of the two officers. The L.A. County coroner's records released on Saturday now show the man who shot and killed the two officers at their hotel or at a hotel took his own life last week. Police say the guy died on the sidewalk outside the motel. The officers were sent to the motel to investigate a report that a woman had been stabbed. 
so much frustration for air travelers over the weekend. FlightAware.com reports there were 24 flight cancellations on Father's Day at LAX. There were also more than 195 flight delays across the country, more than 6,000 delays and 2,700 flights canceled. I'm going to get into that a little more in your biz bites in just a second to find out exactly why. We know one of the things has been staffing, and LAX is recruiting people for a career program it calls Life Changing. The program known as Hire LAX provides people free training to become union apprentices on different construction jobs. And then we actively work with those graduates to get them placed on jobs that are actually rebuilding LAX as part of our $15 billion modernization program. The Air Force Keith Montgomery says more than 280 students have graduated from previous programs. All those graduates have earned more than $10 million in wages so far. LAX officials say orientation for the class they're recruiting for is on July 23rd. Like Trolley. The Bears Wheel at the Santa Monica Pier will be open to celebrate Juneteenth and it'll be lit up with a display of red, white, and blue patterns along with animations and transitions in green, red, and gold to represent the official Juneteenth flag. The display will go on from sunset until midnight. The post office will be closed and there'll be no mail delivery for this Juneteenth. The stock market is also closed along with the federal government buildings, many public and private schools, and the L.A. County and City Public Libraries. Juneteenth honors when enslaved black people in Texas were free, representing the end of slavery in the U.S. When we come back, we are going to talk your biz bites this morning. Like I said, we'll get into those flight cancellations. Is this a sign of things to come for the 4th of July holiday? Also, well, it's...